So I thought I'd check into a shareholder meeting, except with my audience members instead of like shareholders. You might be here because you're interested in the development of my company, and you might be here just because you like my YouTube videos, but maybe you're just passing by and you're like, what the hell is this guy's deal? And if that's you, hi, I'm Will, and I've been seeing biomimetic science and science fiction inspired inventions for like 15 years now, and yet these haven't really changed our society that much. I want to try to accelerate that process. I've been a YouTuber, a member of the real life superhero community. I've been an engineer and I've been a student for like 20 years now. And I'm putting my best foot forward with my company, Dragline Dynamics, trying to bridge the disconnect between fantastical and imaginative science and everyday people. So we're starting small, but if you support this idea, you might be wondering, how's it going? It's going okay. <laughs> Building a company from the ground up is never easy. I've been reading this book, uh, How I Built This by Guy Raz. Um, it tells the story of like Airbnb and Bumble and all sorts of uh, cool, successful startups like that. Can't believe I just called Bumble cool. So Guy Raz likens building a company to jumping off of a cliff and trying to build a plane on the way down. And I'll be honest, startups in just in general have a 70% chance of failure. So I'm well aware of that fact. On top of that, I'm building just about the most unorthodox company you can think of. So I am doing a version of bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is where you try to do whatever you can to make your company money. This book describes how the founders of Airbnb sold Barack Obama inspired cereal and also maxed out a bunch of credit cards to try to keep their business afloat while they were having trouble building revenue. Uh, maxing out credit cards is insane. Like I'm not gonna do that. That's like, I'll ruin my life doing that. So instead of doing random or risky stuff, I'm bootstrapping within the realm of the values of my company. First of all, Dragline Dynamics provides a host of services that bring advanced engineering expertise, currently mine, but hopefully other people in the future, to a wide range of customers. This is essentially the consulting arm of the company. And we've got a couple of tiers. Firstly, I provide flat fee programming services for Python and Arduino. That's what I'm most comfortable with. Longtime viewers know I can code well, but they haven't seen the projects I've generated as part of my PhD program. One that I'm most proud of is the reproduction from scratch of the diffusion policy method for robot behavior cloning. Now filling out the quote form for this programming service is super easy. You just head here on my website, you either click here or here and just submit some information about your project. Secondly, for broader engineering projects, not just coding, I have a similar form to fill out. And these are for projects of like indefinite length, right? Like if you need support for like weeks or months or years maybe. Maybe your project requires simulation like computational fluid mechanics or beam theory, finite element analysis. If you need me to generate or analyze math-based models of your project, I'm happy to do that. You can see I'm very good at that. That's my main jam on my channel. I love doing that. Maybe you need me to generate a control policy or a sensing algorithm for a robot you're building. I have a lot of experience there. All of the methods I have experience in can actually make your project far cheaper than just conducting trial and error with potentially really expensive hardware, right? If you want my ongoing support with a project, just click here or click here and fill out the form with info about your project. I've got one client for this right now, and he seems really satisfied with the way the project is going. Now those first two services can be pretty costly for your everyday person who just wants to make something cool, which who doesn't? Bringing advanced engineering to everyday people is a huge part of what I want to accomplish with this company. So I provide an incredibly accessible meetings only option. That's just, you can book a meeting with me for $20 a session. And I'll give you my best advice for how to take your project from in here to the real world. I know this is especially important for high school and college students who just have a passion for building things and need some expert help, but don't have a lot of money to spend. I've been there, I get it, I've been in that position. Now that's all engineering project consulting, but I also provide accessible tutoring sessions for pretty much all things STEM. For instance, I tutored a student on the math ACT and was able to get him a whopping 35. I'm currently tutoring him in pre-calculus where we're working on trigonometry and trigonometric identities. Now on the more advanced side of college math, I'm tutoring a student in robot kinematics and dynamics where we're going over Jacobians, the mapping between joint velocities and end effector velocities. But overall, having these services as part of this company has been surprisingly awesome. Not only does it earn some revenue while providing accessible services, it also keeps my technical skills super sharp because I'm working on problems that I usually don't work on actively. Now, aside from services, we've got products. One product is available for purchase right now. That's Symbolite. It's one of the many innovations I found incredibly useful for my own 
previous identity concealing activities. Another product launch is imminent. That's Charlotte. I, she needs no introduction at this point, right? She's got eight legs and you can pre-order her now. The next product to come is likely a wrist ejection bracelet or WEB, web. Damien and I are hard at work bridging the usability gap for this product because what I have right now, really good as a research tool, but it's not ready for consumer use yet. I, like if I sold this, you'd be like, how do I use it? And I'd be like, here's a thousand steps. And you'd be like, I don't want this. <laughs> So that finally brings us to the relevant revenue stream of this YouTube video, YouTube videos. So I was ready to abandon this channel, like I really was. Uh, and then the repelling video came out in October of 2024 and it got 200,000 views, which my channel hadn't got above 100,000 views since like 2017. For a long time, I was sure that my channel was essentially shadow banned. I don't like to throw that word around lightly. It was a very frustrating time. And then all of a sudden, 200,000 views, $1,000 in ad revenue from a single video. And I was like, well, this could be very good for a company, right? It's free advertising. It generates revenue. It was actually like, oh, I could just keep this around while I do all this other stuff. The tricky thing is uh, YouTube videos take a lot of work. Even this one that I'm basically just talking in. It takes a lot of work to make something like this. And what's even more frustrating is I think it's just a numbers game. You know, it's just probabilities. I've grown to be less frustrated with it than I was when I was younger. I feel like when I was younger, I used to compare myself a lot more to other people. But now it's clear to me that, you know, there's at least a hundred of you, right, that are really passionate about what I'm doing. And that's pretty cool. Like it's kind of lucky for any person to achieve th that level um, of just like having a hundred people being excited about your passions and your dreams for the world. I'm trying to be like super grateful for that. I think that is amazing and I'm happy to have achieved that. If it's not a hundred, it's a thousand. I think what is still really frustrating is that my brain can't piece together a correlation between the amount of effort I put into a video and how well it does. Like I'll get on a kick this summer. I had two videos pop off a little bit and be in the ballpark of like 20,000 views. For me, 20,000 views is a pop off. That's where we are. Both of those were kind of like, ah, hastily put these together and maybe we'll get something good. Um, and I'm like, ah, this is, people are going to see that this is like rushed or whatever. Um, but people really liked those videos. And then, <laughs> then the following week I'll be like, oh, I'm going to do something now. I'm going to script and it's going to be really well thought out. And, um, everyone is going to like, it's going to have high quality animations and all this stuff. And a video like that gets like 5% of the views sometimes of a video I um, like don't work very hard on. So I could, you know, my, my human primate lizard brain is trying to be like, I talked about it in the last video, how our brain is trying to recognize patterns all the time, even when there's no patterns, even when there's randomness. Every, every time a new video comes out, I'm like, what is, what is, what is the secret sauce? And it just doesn't work. Like my prediction algorithm in my brain is, is so off to the point where I'm like, this is just, it could just be random. And if it's not random, if there is some link between what I put in and what I get out, I have no earthly idea what it is. And that's why I thought it would be better to have a computer do it, an AI algorithm. Now, I know what you're saying. Will, uh, Mr. Amazing, Dr. Amazing, what's the deal? You just did like two whole videos about how AI is bad. It's not exactly what I said. I just have critiques of it. But the things that I think are good about the idea of machine learning, right? This is, AI is a buzzword. AI is a buzzword. The thing about machine learning is that it's very good at identifying patterns because there's no emotional aspect trying to predict a mapping between inputs and outputs. And that is exactly what we need to do in this case. I'm like if you've ever been anxious, like anxiety is this pattern recognizing thing where you're like, what is going on? I don't know. Do my friends hate me or do I just need to go to sleep? You know, and believe it or not, like this, trying to get a computer to do this analysis 
takes a lot of that anxiety out of my brain and offloads it onto something that that type of question is more built for. So now we get to the technical part of the video where I get to show you my ideas and hopefully I get some feedback from you guys in the comments of a machine learning based a YouTube predictor. Okay, so I just wanna do a quick rudimentary run through of what my idea is for predicting the behavior of the YouTube algorithm because I can't do that like with my own brain. I just can't do it. And come up with an idea to use an architecture called a multimodal VAE or variational autoencoder. Some data gets encoded through a bunch of neural networks into this latent representation or an embedding we call Z. And Z exists in this what's called a latent space. So this is an autoencoder, right? Like you take this input data X, goes through the encoder, you have the latent embedding, in this case it's C, and then you have your decoder D, and then you get your reconstructed X. In this case, it's, we call it X hat. Variational autoencoder then takes uh, the latent space to be reconstruction of a normal distribution. Specifically, it looks for a distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Classic normal distribution. Well, I'm gonna do what's called joint training. And so in addition to training on reconstruction, and on KL divergence, I'm also training on what's the important thing here, predicting the YouTube algorithm behavior. We have what I like to call algorithm dynamics because who knows why YouTube does the things that it does, I don't know. And it seems like it does things for my channel differently than it does for other channels. Uh, this video here, this video did pretty well, um, but you can see we have like a pretty linear region here and then a slowing down and then a completely different linear region with a different slope here. This one, very interesting behavior, um, starts out strong, rate actually increases. You can see the amount of views per day increases until about the third day and then suddenly drops completely. And you can see it in the impressions here as well. It's like YouTube is showing this to 10,000 people one day, then 11,000, then 17,000, then 30,000, and then the next day, 2,000, the following day, 600. It's like, what is the decision-making process here? Trajectories are tricky to predict. You have to predict all these points, right? And I'm interested in the first 60 days. So that would be, you would need to predict 60 points. So the output of your neural network, of your prediction part of your neural network has to be 60 points. So what I have here is this latent space, as it's being trained, it also gets trained as an input to a prediction network. The prediction are these pink vectors here, which are representations of that trajectory. And you can see they can be trajectories of views, watch time, net subscribers. I'm looking at an equation that looks like this, somewhat, oscillatory, some like has an exponential component, so there's decay. Um, but the key is that it's represented by these five parameters. So instead of having 60 numbers to predict, I just have five numbers to predict. I really want to try to focus on like more ethical machine learning solutions. So when it comes to the thumbnail, I don't want to use pre-trained image models because that would be basically for the thumbnail part, right? I don't want to use pre-trained image models because that those are trained on other people's data and they're, they're this is just a bunch of wrong with them. Um, and additionally, just for practical purposes, I'm only interested in my videos. So I wanna look at the types of thumbnails that I've made. I'm not really looking at what I could make, right? I'm sure if I trained everything on YouTube, this would just spit out, why don't you just make a Mr. Beast video, you know? But I'm trying to do this in the context of what I'm doing, what videos of mine do the best, not what videos on YouTube do the best. So I use the YouTube uh, analytics and data API to essentially get all of the analytics from my channel. So I got thumbnails, um, you know, uh, uh, the, those trajectories that I needed to replace. So I got all of the data that I need. So for instance, here's a video I did in 2017, in August of 2017. And so the blue line here, so this is for watch time, the blue line here is that trajectory and I was able to use just a simple fitting algorithm to fit that equation that I had before that I showed you guys um, with those five parameters to this trajectory behavior and it seems to fit pretty well. 
This one, it was the probably the most recent video that was posted at the time of me extracting this data set. This one is an example where it fits pretty well. How I made my design work the first time. This was a pretty well-performing video. Again, the equation doesn't capture that spike. This is the function that I'm using. It might be modified, but the method is just to have like this very simple five parameter function uh, explain the dynamics. And then all you need to do from the neural network side is predict those five parameters. So it's a much more lightweight model. So it's trickier than you might think to train this whole VAE all at the same time. What I set my sights on first, and this ended up being a little bit more extensive, just because I thought it was really interesting, was to construct the, it's funny, you can hear people outside having fun, and I'm here looking at reconstructions of my own YouTube thumbnails. So again, I got data that I own to train an image model on locally on my computer. It's really interesting to watch these train because first it's brightness, then it's color, and then it's shapes, and then it just kind of resolves and it kind of picks out details like that. It's really cool. But this is my, my best transformer image reconstruction to date. Again, small data set, small architecture. You know, you can't expect this to be Dolly 2 even. It's good enough, right? Because we just want a representation. It might be that the thumbnail alone is enough to predict the behavior. What I want to do is just run a test where we see if the thumbnail can just predict performance. So we're just going to train that quickly and just see what comes out. So I cut more than half of that whole discussion there. So if you want a crash course in machine learning or my intuition about machine learning, feel free to subscribe to my Patreon and you can get the full uncut video there in about a week or so. Okay, so at first glance, the training went really, really well. 0.01 prediction loss. But if we look at the actual trajectory comparisons, the prediction is not that great. Um, the green line in here is the prediction for something like this, which is a you know long form video. Prediction is, is just way off. One thing to check is whether or not we can actually overfit because these are from the test set. It could be that the thumbnail's not enough. Will I finish this project? I don't know. That's kind of why I'm showing you guys because I think it's kind of cool and interesting and I just wanted to see what you guys would think because who knows if this will show up again. It might. It might not. But next week, we're back in hardware mode with the WEB wrist ejection bracelet. And we're going to take a look at some of the new features that I'm including to improve the usability, like I discussed that Damien and I are trying to figure out how to improve the usability. But until then, stay safe, stay amazing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.